Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stephen for Hey Techie here. Today, as voted for by you, we're going to be taking a look at this, Acara's TVOC air quality monitor. It's one of Acara's many remote sensors, and over the past few weeks, we've been having a look at those and what they can do for you and your smart home. It's a pretty small and unassuming device, but it promises a lot. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this. Before we go any further, I want to thank Akara for sending us this TVOC air quality monitor to review. This never impacts on the way that we review products. Here at Hey Techie, we are always as transparent as possible about where we get our devices from. You can't buy trust, which is why we always strive to be completely honest and unbiased in our product reviews. Back to it then, so this is the Akara TVOC air quality monitor. As it says on the box, Fundamentally, Acara are marketing this as an air quality monitor device, but it is worth pointing out right away that the device will also monitor the temperature and the humidity of your room as well. There's lots and lots of different sensor devices out there that can do this though, whereas there's not that many TVOC sensors out there. The EVE Room does this, so it does cost close to £90 here in the UK, which is just unaffordable for most, even if EVE does have a good reputation for quality devices. The Acara offering here costs £40, so less than half of the EVE Room's second generation. But do you get what you pay for? For your money, you'll be buying this little device. It measures about 5cm by 7cm by 1.5cm, so it is small, but you still should be able to see it on your desk or on your table easily enough. Inside the box, you get a sensor, one magnetic mount, one sticky mount, and an instruction booklet. The device itself is well built and looks the part. It's very simple but effective. There's a single button on top used to connect the device and to manually refresh the reading. Two sensors are available on the left and right of the device, and there is an e-ink display. Now that looks great in my opinion, as I personally prefer this over conventional LCD displays, but that is a personal preference. The e-ink display is sharp, really high contrast, and readable in all lighting situations, so that's a really big thumbs up from me. The sensor is only available in white, which might clash with some setups. The e-ink display is also better for battery life compared to the alternatives, meaning that the sensor itself is capable of running off two CR2450 coin batteries, and that should last you around a year. Now, given that the device is on all of the time and constantly monitoring temperature, humidity, and air quality, that's a pretty impressive return. So that's the physical design, but what about what's inside? In order to use this monitor with HomeKit or any of the other smart home ecosystems, you will need an Acara hub. That's the same for all of their devices, so there's nothing new there. The air quality monitor communicates using Zigbee 3.0, which is an extremely efficient mode of communication, which helps get the most out of that battery life. Setup again is pretty simple. As with other Acara devices, you'll connect this via the Acara app, which then imports it automatically into HomeKit as a sensor. There's nothing much more to add here, I was able to add it into the Acara app without any difficulties whatsoever. One slight thing to note is that the pull tabs for the batteries, which when I pulled mine out, the plastic ripped inside unbeknownst to me, so initially it wouldn't power on, so I had to open it up and take that out. It's a small issue, but it may impact some of you out there. Above all though, a sensor like this will be judged on its performance. So, how does it fare? Well, in order to compare the temperature and humidity readings, I've used the SwitchBot monitor. This is the one which I have all around my home, so I'm fairly happy that its performance is reliable and accurate. Now, after leaving the SwitchBot and Acara devices next to one another in the same room for about an hour, I came back to find them quite close. They matched perfectly in their humidity reading, but there was a slight variation in temperature. Sure, this isn't the most scientific test, but for the casual user, I think this will be more than sufficient. Arguably, the most important element of this Acara device, though, is its ability to monitor the air quality in your home. For this, we do need to understand what TVOC means. TVOC stands for Total Volatile Organic Compounds. And basically, this is a name given to a whole load of pollutants which can float around the air in your home. 
As far as I can see though, there is no industry standard definition of what constitutes as a VOC. Some VOCs are very harmful, like formaldehyde and benzene, and these are present in glues, paints, and often are found in cigarettes, appliances, cleaning products, furniture, carpeting, and personal products like cologne and antiperspirant. We really do need to watch out for these, as benzene is a known human carcinogen, and formaldehyde is classified as a probable human carcinogen, which can cause really serious illnesses. But other VOCs are far less harmful. For example, many plants, including houseplants, use their own VOCs to interact with their environments. And these gases are, by and large, harmless to humans. Right off the bat, I'm not entirely sure what specific VOCs the Acara sensor is set up to detect, so it is a little bit of a guessing game about what exactly the device is looking for. It's important to highlight though that this is not a carbon monoxide or smoke alarm. A lot of people on online forums seem to ask this question, but I can definitively state that is not what this device is for. So to test out the Acara sensor, I used some regular household products to see how much impact it made on the reading. Air quality is measured in leaves on the device. Five leaves means excellent air quality, whilst one leaf means really bad air quality. However, a feature that not many people seem to know about is with a double press on the button on the top of the device, it turns the leaf rating into a statistical digit, registering VOC parts per billion. So to test this out, I sprayed and painted some goods near the device and then left it for 30 minutes then removed the source where possible, and then left the sensor again for 30 minutes. First I tried some antiperspirants, which I sprayed liberally on and around the device. However, despite nearly choking on the amount I sprayed, there was no movement at all in the sensor reading. However, when I tried some nail polish, within one minute, the sensor reading had begun to drop, and within three minutes the reading had fallen to just three leaves. In both cases, when I moved the sensor away from the source, the leaf rating recovered quite quickly. However, the levels were off the charts when I tried the cologne. Switching to the parts per billion reading, I sprayed three times on and around the device, which rocketed to 1,884 parts per billion almost instantly, before hitting the maximum of 9,999 parts per billion just 30 seconds later. Now I can only assume that the true reading was massively higher, but we hit the maximum of what the meter could report on. Somewhat hilariously, the reading stayed at 9999 for so long, I thought I'd actually broken it. I had to reset the meter by removing the batteries and taking it outside for a while until it could regain some composure. Now, I'll be honest, the results here are fairly limited since I've got no similar device to compare them to. However, Adam Bradley over at Adam's Tech Life has done a comparison video with the Acara monitor versus the Eve Home 2, and the results were absolutely terrifying. In his video, the Acara sensor massively underperformed compared to the Eve device, and I'll leave a link to his video above so you can check that out if you're interested. In my testing, the Acara monitor seemed to work reasonably well. But without a direct comparison, it's impossible for me to say just how good the device is with any degree of precision. With all of that said and done, how does this device integrate with HomeKit? With HomeKit though, unlike temperature and humidity, you can actually trigger other devices with an air quality reading, which is a very useful feature. For example, if you had a smart air purifier, you could get it to turn on should the air quality drop, or even to trigger a smart plug to turn on a dumb air purifier instead. Even if the reading is a little bit off with a car's offering, you could adjust for that by triggering your smart air purifier to come on, even if the air quality drops even slightly. This in no way excuses a poor quality sensor, but since it is quite cheap compared to others on the market, it might be an option for you to consider. So what can we conclude? The Acara TVOC air quality monitor is a decent little device. It's well built, I love the e-ink display, and it can fit into almost any room. The temperature and humidity sensors seem fairly accurate, or at least they're relatively consistent with my SwitchBot devices. The TVOC sensor clearly works, but how accurate it is is questionable. 
All spray containers contain some levels of VOCs, so the antiperspirant really should have seen more of a response than it did, and it does worry me a bit that it didn't move. Adam's comparison with the EVE room and this Acara sensor is really worth a watch, and it's really informed my opinion on this device, even after I did my own testing. I'd love to do my own extensive experiments with both Acara and EVE's devices in future. All in all, I'm personally a little bit disappointed in the sensitivity of the T-Block measuring sensors, but for a casual smart home user who is already invested in the Acara ecosystem, it's probably not going to be a bad addition to your smart home. Just for me, this product doesn't meet Acara's usual excellent standards. What do you make of it? Let me know in the comments down below. Going into 2022, we're going to be bringing you a lot more great content. We're reviving our weekly poll, so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you see all of our latest updates, including our community polls. In the meantime, get ready for lots of additional content on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter pages. Head on over to our socials and sign up today so you don't miss out in the new year. Until next time then, I've been Steven for Hey Techie.